In this video, I will be talking about different built-in functions that we use when we are dealing with list boxes. I created a list box and I called it LST class names. And this is going to be a list box with uh, seven students' names. I will be using this example to showcase how different functions are used in list boxes and how is that going to impact my, my list box. The first built-in function I will be talking about is selected item and in this built-in function it actually brings a copy of the item that the user clicked on the list box and this happens at runtime so when you run your application the user might actually click some items that you have in your list box and what this built-in function does it will make a copy of the item that the user clicked here is an example of how you can use the selected item function. Remember, selected item function would return a copy of the item. So I need to know what is the data type that I have for the items in the list box. In this case, in my list box, LST class names, since it has names, the correct data type would be a string. So I'm defining str name of type string. And I'm going to use the selected item function. What this is going to do, I'm going to assume that the user clicked the name John. So this function, it's going to make a copy of that name and it's going to be assigned to str name. And when I send the output to the user, the output will be the name John. And this is going to change based on the name that the user clicks at runtime. Using the function selected index will return an integer, and that integer will represent the index of the selected item. In case the user did not select any items, then this function will return the value of minus 1 or negative 1. Here is an example how to use the selected index function. In this example, I will assume that the user selected John. Since selected index will return an integer, I need to define a variable with integer data type. So in this case, I define int index with integer data type, then I assigned it using the function selected index. In this case, instead of making a copy of John, the compiler will actually go to the index and will make a copy of that number. And that is the number that's going to be assigned to int index. So when I send the output to the user, the output is going to be number 3. Here is an example of an application that is using selected item and selected index functions. As you notice, I did not click any items from the list box. So if I clicked selected item, there is no output. The reason behind that is that there is no item to make copy of. If I click selected index, I receive the value or the output of minus one that's because i did not select any items if i were to select an item from the list when i click selected item now it's making a copy from the item that i selected if i change my selection it will change the output now if i click selected index it's going to display the index where this item is saved and in this case it's going to be zero because the name Mary is saved at location zero or index zero. So if I changed, it's always going to display the index number of that item and where it is saved in the list.